Hey, good morning. It's Pete, North Las Vegas. It's one of my newer builds. It's a Wyndham Weaponry A2 government profile barrel with a 1 and 9 twist. Um, rifle shoots well. I did a couple other videos on it. I had a little issue with the lower. It was pretty egregious blem that they sold me for full price, but we won't get into that in this video. What this video is about is um, head spacing. And I think that head spacing a brand new rifle, a new to you rifle, or maybe you have a rifle that's kind of coming up on a high round count. It's uh, you might want to check it again just to make sure things are going good. So anyway, uh, like I said, I think head spacing is is mandatory. It, it's it's not an optional thing if if you care about having a safe rifle. And if you take a brand new rifle or a new to you rifle, used, new, whatever and you don't do a head spacing check, in my opinion, what you are in the process of doing is getting ready to piss on an electric fence. And I'm trying to strongly recommend and suggest that you don't piss on that electric fence and that you do perform this basic check. And if you don't have the gauges, the tools, or the knowledge to do it yourself, uh, most FFLs offer some basic gunsmithing at a minimum. If they can't do it, take the weapon to your uh, your gunsmith or buy the gauges your, and do it yourself. It's, it's not hard to do. So anyway, these are some old gauges I bought back in, uh, I believe, 1990. I bought my first AR in uh, 1990, and I've been headspacing all of my rifles ever since then. So here's what the actual gauges look like. You can see the uh, the go gauge is 1.464. No go, 1.470. And your field gauge, 1.474. Okay, so rifles are pretty high precision devices. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, if you look at the range of these numbers, we're not we're starting at 1.465, and you count from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Before you hit 0 0.470, the range is five thousandths of an inch. So if things are out of spec by five thousandths of an inch, your rifle is not in good condition. Now, when you get to this field dimension, 1.474, um, yeah, don't don't fire the weapon. You're you've you're getting into really unsafe zone. Okay, so let's get into the actual head spacing, and I'll show you how I do it, and I'll also show you a different set of gauges that are specific for the AR platform that I think you might want to have also. Okay, so let's get the bolt out. And then we're going to talk about the bolt a little bit, and i got to perform a step on it before we get going on the head spacing. Um, before we get started on the bolt, let's uh, make sure that you get your chamber cleaned out, get all the excess oil out, make sure all those uh, extension lugs are clean. No lint, no pieces of paper towel, nothing in that chamber. It's got to be nice and clean before we do the head spacing. Okay, so when I head space, I leave the ejector in the bolt. And my experience since starting around late 1989 and 1990, building quite a few ARs and checking head space, this will, this will not give you a bad reading so long as it's working. So long as it doesn't have a problem, leaving that ejector in is, is not going to give you a bad reading so long as there's nothing wrong with it. So one of the first things I'll do is I'll take this screwdriver and I'll push that ejector plunger and make sure that it goes flush with the bolt face. So long as it goes flush with the bolt face, you'll, you'll get a good reading with, with your gauges. Um, if it doesn't go flush with the bolt face, something's wrong with the plunger pin, the spring, 
um, possibly the roll pin, uh, something's going on with the ejector pocket, you know, something's not right with, with the ejector. But as long as it goes flush, then, then we can do the head spacing. I do remove the extractor because depending on how the extract, uh, extractor gets a hold of the cartridge, um, that, that can affect your, your go and your no-go reading. So we're going to take the bolt apart and get the, uh, the ejector out, and then we'll put the bolt back together and uh, we'll start doing the actual head spacing, doing the safety checks. Okay, so I've removed the extractor. We're gonna put the uh, bolt carrier group back together and then we'll do some actual head spacing. Okay, let's start off with the go gauge. And uh, for the antis at YouTube, this is a safety check. We're not assembling, disassembling. We're showing how to make sure that we have a safe rifle. Okay, so like I said in the, uh, the earlier clip, make sure your, your chamber is nice and clean. Gonna slide our go gauge in. And we are going to put the bolt in. And you can see we're We're at the extension. So this shouldn't take, on a go gauge, it shouldn't take a whole lot of force, just, just enough to, to close the bolt and lock it up. And you can see that didn't take much at all. So that's on a go gauge. So, so far things are looking good, but we got to stick our no go gauge in there and, and see how that goes. Okay, so we got our no go gauge in the, the chamber. And let's see if we can get this closed and locked up. Now, if this closes and locked up, we've got a problem because the no-go gauge means it's not supposed to close, lock up, or go into full battery. So let's, uh, we'll give it a moderate push. And you can see that it maybe just started to go a little bit, but it's not going into full battery or full lock. So it passed on a no-go. So, according to our gauges here, the bolt carrier, the bolt, and the rifle chamber relationship is good. Now, let's say that it didn't pass. Let's say it, it maybe for some really odd reason, it, it won't close on a go, or it will close on a no-go, um, which are both kind of bad indications. Uh, we get into a chicken or the egg situation. If you only have one rifle, one bolt carrier group, or one barrel, how do you know what is causing the problem? And just say we've decided that it's not the ejector, but there's there's something else that, that's not right. How do we know whether it's the barrel chamber or the bolt carrier group? Well, with nothing to compare against, we don't really know unless you take a good visual inspection and something really obvious jumps out at you. But let's just say you can't really detect anything visually. How do we know which is causing the problem? Okay, now we're going to get into what's called extension gauges. Okay, so these are made by uh, Pacific Tool and Gauge. And these are called extension gauges, and they perform two basic functions. They perform head spacing and determine the relationship between the barrel extension and the barrel chamber. And um, you can see here that they have uh, simulated bolt lugs, just like your, uh, your actual bolt carrier. So... What do these do for you? We get back to that chicken and the egg I was talking about in the earlier clip, where your rifle does not pass the go or no go on your just your basic standard headspace gauge. Yeah, so we're going to try to determine whether it's you know the barrel barrel extension, or if we have a problem with the uh, the bolt carrier group. And uh, so that's what these gauges are about. So these establish, like I said, the relation 
between the barrel extension and head spacing. So, that barrel extension right there and the chamber have also have a relationship and it it has to be right. So let's uh, let's see what these gauges do. Okay, so if the chamber is correct and the barrel extension relationship between the rifle barrel chamber and the extension is correct, this go gauge should slide in past the extension and you should be able to rotate this once you get it uh, fully in there. So let's let's see if that all works out. Okay, so I got it started in the lugs. And once I get it all the way in there, this should spin. And I don't know if the camera's picking it up very well. You can see it's spinning because the extension lugs on the gauge have gone past the lugs on the extension like they're supposed to. Okay, so the barrel chamber and extension relationship on this rifle passes on the Pacific Tool and Gauge extension head spacing gauge. Let's stick the no-go in there. Okay, so I have this one started and it's, it's in the lugs but I wish there's a better way to show this. You can see on the extension, it, it's in the extension, but it doesn't go all the way through the extension. And it won't spin. And so between the go gauge and the no-go gauge, what this says is that the relationship between the barrel extension and the barrel chamber are correct. Now, if that gauge would have went past all the way through the lugs, into what maybe you might consider full battery and, and spun, then the relationship between that extension and the barrel chamber is not right. You got a problem. So that's why these gauges are, are kind of very helpful to determine on an AR type platform um, what is actually bad, whether it's the bolt, bolt carrier or if it's just the rifle chamber and extension relationship. So in this case, we've proved out that the barrel is good. Okay, so these extension, these headspace extension gauges, uh, they come with removable uh, handles. And I, I believe if I remember right, Pacific Tool and Gauge sells longer ones. So you don't have to fumble around trying to get them in there like I did. You can just come in straight from the back of your receiver and, and test things out. Okay, so the other thing I, I wanted to say, if I didn't already mention it, these gauges will only check the barrel chamber and extension relationship. That's all they do. They just help you to determine whether you've got a, a good barrel chamber. And you still have to do your basic head spacing check with the bolt and bolt carrier that you plan to use. Um, so just using these does not exactly do the same thing as your, your basic head spacing gauge. So this, this still has to be performed. Um, I know maybe I'm kind of repeating myself from the last clip, but really pretty much all these do is they're just helpful in you determining whether it's just a barrel or chamber that, that has an issue. Okay, so final comment. This is really easy to do. Um, if it's not within your budget to spend money on uh, headspace gauges or these extension gauges, uh, you know, I, I understand that. But like I said at the beginning of the video, headspacing checks to make sure that you have a safe AR, it's not optional to me. It's, it's a mandatory check. And I don't care if you bought a top-of-the-line AR, whether it's Daniel Defense, an LMT, or an LMNOP, whatever the hell you bought, um, check your headspace. And that's more than just a little bit of a strong recommendation. I'm, I'm kind of telling you to do it. And if you decide not to do it, you just have all this faith in today's manufacturing and 
quality control and you're just going to take that rifle that's that's new or new to you and you take it out to the range and start blasting then you are that guy or that person that is pissing on an electric fence. Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.